Hi everybody, it's Peter Zellum's Greeny Flix Adventure 8 and I'm out on this windy, sunny Australia winter, no, spring day actually, in Sydney. It's a beautiful day. I'm actually testing out Leica today. I've got two Leica cameras. I've got the Leica M240, or MP Type 240 with a vintage lens on it, an Elmar 50mm f2.8 light Wetzlar lens. Now, what I'm really testing today is an unusual lens, and this one is on my M10R, and it's a telekinetic, telekinetic lens. A cinema lens that's been modified to fit the M mount. And this is f2, and it's uh, two inches, so 50mm lens. We'll be able to compare these two lenses, so two vintage lenses, one cinema, which goes from f2 right up to f32, and this uh, vintage lens, f, uh, Leica lens, f2 to, that goes to f16. I will throw into the mix also the 50mm f1.4 Sumalux lens. It'll be interesting to see how these uh, lenses compare. More importantly, the, what the characteristics are for each of the lenses which might also give us a hint to the use case for those lenses. All right, so let's uh, shoot around Sydney, midday, strong sun, and we'll see what sort of results we can get. Well, on my bicycle today, so that's a good way to get around actually in Sydney. Avoid all the traffic and all the parking fines that you can pick up along the way. Not to mention, if you want to park in a car park here, um, one hour might cost you $45 for an hour. I remember London being a bit like that. No doubt New York and Paris will probably have similar ones. I'm filming with the GoPro 10 and I've got the uh, Creators Edition. Now what that means is it's got an extra housing and and a microphone with a wind muff on it. So on this windy day, hopefully it's picking my l my voice up clearly without too much wind buffering and uh, distortion. All right. So what can I tell you about uh, the telekinetic lens? Well, I have some stuff in on the video here. Look in the video somewhere. I'll do some research on it. Yes, yeah, so I'll shoot in bright daylight, also in uh, some shadow areas. The things I'll be looking out for is contrast, some flaring, um, some hazing the lens with a strong light, chromatic aberrations of any kind, and also the type of character, the, the bokeh and maybe the drop-off from the center with regards to focus, how things change um, in, depending on what the shot is. All right, well, I've got some uphill sections to do here. Do I have my coffee meeting first and then continuing? Continue with the shoot. Okay, testing out the SYN lens on the MP240 and uh, so using the, the audio from the GoPro here that's going to be better than using the audio on the, um, on the Leica but I guess um, trying out this, this SYN lens I think I've got the focus probably about right it should be about should be about here so that uh, it's going to be a soft focus everywhere else shooting F2 and um, hopefully we'll be able to sync the audio correctly. So this is, this is really some extreme light. But anyway, I'll try shooting another location where I'm in the shade. And then we'll see how we are. Um, I guess shooting with a GoPro here, I'm getting a good image in the light. And then also in this light here. So, how's the look on the Sin camera? on the SYN camera. 
Sin camera, on the Sin lens. It would help if I actually turn on the camera. Okay, so let's do another sink. So I'm sinking here and sinking there. So my subject right now is a bird sitting right next to the MP240 there. We'll grab a shot of the bird and the camera. Okay, so I've got the... Uh, 20 I've got the 50 millimeter f 2.8 Elma collapsible lens on the m10r now see that shot work out yeah it's okay all right so how does it look with the sin camera with the sin lens on the mp240 I'm shooting on the, the mp240 the, it's the only Leica M that actually has a video function and uh, it's shooting at 1080p as far as the video function is concerned. I'm shooting at f2 on the Sin lens and it's a 50mm lens. High contrast. Anyway, uh, what else can I tell you? Um, yes, yeah, so using the audio on the GoPro here and then syncing it with the MP240. Otherwise you've got no hope of getting the audio from this distance. Alright, so does the Sin lens have uh, an interesting impact in videoing? That is the question. Alright, enough of this scene and we'll move on to the next scene if there is another one. Let's see. Okay, well I'm back. I'm back. I'm back from my bicycle ride and out in Sydney and I'm back in the studio. I've been trying to do some research on this um, on this telekinetic, telekinetic lens and what I found is that the manufacturer of this lens is Taylor Hobson Cook. The original Taylor Hobson lens manufacturer was based in the UK and established in 1886, so it's a bit of history here. And then Cook came along and uh, into the fold about 1890. And these lenses are so old and being British, I suppose that's the reason why it's not in millimeters, but it's a two inch lens that would explain it. Being a cinemagraphic lens, um, it's unusual and it has all sorts of character to it. And you'll see also in the photographs and but anyway the video is going to be interesting so i'm going to put this lens on the nikon z6 right now also in the studio here so right now i'm filming with the 40 millimeter f2 uh, z lens on the z6 so i'll put this lens on that and let's see how this whole thing starts to look we go all right so I've got my chart there so that is my center of focus and um, so if I sort of bring my eyes to about there and then move that across to about there then I should be in focus and we'll have this magnificent cinemagraphic look um, so I'm shooting at f2 with the telekinetic lens and um, how's it looking? I could experiment with the lighting here, make it more romantic. Do I look a thousand years younger? Is this a special lens for that portrait photography? Alright, we can try maybe flicking from colour. Now I've only got two lights here, I've got the side light here and I've also got a a red light here on the background but what about if we flick to black and white let's try that again we'll flick to black and white <laughs> I 
hard to get those <laughs> clicks going. How's that? More dramatic. Yeah. And um, let's try some other lighting as well. How about this lighting? Everything I tell you has to be said in confidence. And I'm here interviewing myself to protect the identity of me type of lighting. Or do I need to stop down even further so that I'm in the dark and the background is all lit up and misty? Hmm. Well, I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised with this uh, unusual lens, this cinemagraphic lens, this Taylor Hobson Cook telekinetic lens, two inch f2 lens. So, um, Photography is all about lenses. That would have to be one of the main components behind any sort of photography. So the more you experiment with different lenses, the better and the more creative you can be. So this is a complete surprise to me. It's the first time I've even attempted to review a cinemagraphic lens on a still or video camera. I guess the good thing about um, video these days on mirrorless cameras is that you get fantastic video, you can do all sorts of wonderful things. So having the uh, Leica, having the Leica MP240, there's, uh, I think there's renewed life in this camera and I'm going to do some more experimenting with the video function of the MP240. It's the only M that has video. And uh, this, this cinemagraphic lens, uh, I think has sort of given me a little bit more enthusiasm to, to experiment a little bit more with this M, this classic M. The M240, MP240, or the M240, Type 240. I'm not sure how popular they are. They haven't been that popular. But uh, maybe the popularity will increase as people experiment with more and more with cinematographic photography and video. We'll um, do a sync. All right, so we'll do a, a sync here. So I've got a bit of my GoPro filming here as well. So at least I'll be able to use the audio of the GoPro rather than using the audio of the MP240. Or at least I'll be able to compare the two having close audio versus further away audio. All right, so the only hint that this uh, lens that I'm filming with right now was a Taylor Hobson was this lens cap here, which um, so it has TH on it and a circle around. I suppose the circle could be a C, so that could be Taylor Hobson Cook. Anyway. Um, at least we'll have a comparison between filming with 1080p on the MP240 versus the Z6, which was also filming in 4K video. I'll be editing the video in 4K, so at least you'll have a bit of a comparison of what sort of results we're getting. Um, I'll show some photographs uh, at the end of this video as well, and uh, at least that way you'll see the type of uh, still shots that I captured out in the bright daylight. So I think that's a wrap. Well, let's have a look at one particular photograph where I used all three lenses. So here is the Teleknik lens shooting at f2, wide open. And wow, what an unusual lens to say the least. The only part that's really in focus and sharp is the center bit here. And then everything as you start deviating, moving towards the corners or to the top or to the side, everything starts to get out of focus and really fuzzy and... Um, what an amazing, unusual lens this is. Let's have a look to see how extreme this is. So the first photograph here is the Sumalux lens, and that is at f2.8 that I've taken that shot at. The next one is the Elmar lens, a collapsible lens, and that's wide open at f2.8. If we have a look at the um, Telekinik lens and the Sumalux lens side by side, 
and we'll go to the very, very center. This is at 100%. You can see right at the very center, it's actually really quite sharp, the Teleconnect lens here on the right and the Sumalux lens on the left here. But as soon as we start moving a bit to the right, <laughs> look what happens to the Teleconnect lens, the uh, Talon Hobson lens. Oh my goodness, it just disappears into mush. And I guess this is where the creativity of photography comes into it. What can you do with mush? And um, you saw from my video, mush can create some really interesting effects, particularly once you're videoing. But with the stills, I suppose if, you, if you've got a nice, uh, nice model, a nice portrait model, you could do something really interesting with, with that. If we look at uh, the Circular Key Railway Station here, how sharp it is with the Sumalux lens. And it starts off sharp with the N and then quickly starts to disappear into this really soft focus uh, towards the edges there. Yeah, really quite amazing effect. If we have a look at, um, okay, the Sumalux and the Elma lenses. And we'll have a look at those two lenses side by side. So we'll zoom in 100%. Uh, you can see that there's more contrast well maybe you can't see it but anyway yeah, I can see that there's more contrast in the Sumalux lens than there is in the Elmar lens the Elmar was shooting wide open where the Sumalux I've stopped down two stops from 1.4 to 2 to 2.8 so we're looking at both 2.8 images so the depth of field would be the same or similar um, however um, you know, the advantage of the Simulux is it is stopped down and you've got a lot more clarity and more contrast, more definition than you do with the Elmar lens. But uh, in both cases, we've got a very good image being dedicated 50mm lenses, prime lenses. But let's have a look at uh, what's happening with the Taylor and Hobson lens. Because what I did, I, I shot this first one here at f2 and then started to stop it down to 2.8 and so forth all right so we have a look at this first one here so that's at f2 and then 2.8 4 5.6 8 11 16 and 32. yeah so at 32 what happens uh we'll zoom in a bit yes yeah, so at 32 you get quite a bit of uh, detail also towards edges but you can see it, it does drop off still even at 32 and then eventually it just goes to complete uh, vignetting uh, so you <laughs> you see all the edges of the lens here um, I suppose if you shot this lens on a cropped sensor then you would only have this internal area and the lens would be at 75 mil. Well, let's have a look at some other shots here. The first one's a Sumalux, then the Elma, and then the Taylor and Hobson lenses uh, to f2, 2.8, 4, and 5.6. So we'll have a look at the Sumalux and the Elma lens side by side. And um, yeah, you can have a look. At, you can see the detail here in the Sumalux lens compared to Elma lens. So yes, I guess no surprises there. Um, but the Elma lens, you know, vintage lens is really quite nice. Still does a pretty good job. If you do a bit of, I haven't done any editing to these photographs. These are just the raw files, just converted to JPEG. All right, we're comparing the Elma lens on the left to the Taylor and Hobson on the right. And uh, yeah, well, it's all very dreamy. The image you get out of the Taylor and Hobson. No surprises there. So if we have a look at, so that's F2 at 2.8 at F4 and 5.6. All right, let's just have a look at the Taylor and Hobson lenses and just the five images that I have here. Yeah, so it's, um, you, know, you have to sort of choose your image here if you're going to use this lens for stills. And you can see the swirl here that uh, that's being created in the bokeh. So that's just shooting at f2. I've focused on this point of the log, 
and then the whole image starts to swirl around there. It's really interesting the way that all the bokeh goes. And uh, this, the sparkle in the water sort of really highlights that. Oh, uh, well, really contest your creativity here. And uh, focus point is somewhere around here. I was sort of setting up for me to actually move into the image there for the video. And then everything else just swirls around. So back in the studio, again, using my color chart here is my focal point. And then we've got a nice swirl that happens all the way around. Yes, well, there you go. Would you buy uh, an, a vintage Sin lens uh, for your camera, for video or for stills? Let me know. I welcome your comments. The Taylor and Hobson lens is for sale. And if you are interested in that lens, then contact me and I can put you in contact with the seller. I hope you found this uh, video interesting. If you have, then give it a thumbs up. And that supports the channel. And um, if it's a first time to my channel, you haven't already subscribed, then do subscribe. Press notifications, you'll be notified when the next video is out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. I surely did in making it. Anyway, thanks again. See you next time on the next video. Cheers. Bye.